In this video, I'm going to go over the things you need to remember about MIDI for the AVID Pro Tools 110 certification test. In Pro Tools, you can have one of two types of tracks that deals with MIDI. One of them is called an instrument track. An instrument track does two things. It can actually store MIDI performances. It can also pass audio as well. It has an audio input too. It can contain a virtual instrument and then it can play it through that virtual instrument. A MIDI track can only store data. It has to output to an instrument external to the track to make any sound. Whenever you think about MIDI, there's one concept you need to have in the back of your mind. And that is the difference between absolute time and relative time. MIDI is something that is relative time. It's locked to a BPM. I can speed it up and slow it down based on the tempo of the song. Audio, on the other hand, is something that's based in an absolute time scale. So once audio has been recorded, it's always going to play back at the same pace. If it was recorded at 44,100 samples per second, because a second doesn't change, the speed samples get played back isn't going to change either. Up at the top of the session, we see the time scales. This is one place where we can see the difference between these two things. I'm going to change what we're looking at here. I'm going to go to my ruler view selector, and I'm going to get rid of some of these things that we don't need. So feet and frames is sort of esoteric. That's something that's used in film. Now I can see rulers that are relevant to this particular conversation. So the top two, those are absolute time scales. Those don't change. So no matter what, those are always going to be the same. However, bars and beats and tempo do change. Watch what happens to these three different types of tracks when I change the tempo. I'm going to change it to a slower tempo, a much slower tempo. So what that means is it's going to take a longer amount of absolute time to cover the relative time of two measures. I hit the plus key in my tempo ruler, brought up my tempo change window, and I'm going to take the BPM and cut them in half. So now it takes much longer for two measures to occur, twice as long. So what that did is it pushed my relative tracks back and it left my audio track, which is locked to real time in the same place. That is several test questions there. The reason for this, Audio tracks by default are going to be sample based. This is indicated by this time based selector and it shows a little clock which tells you that it's absolute time and it's samples. This one is trying to show you a metronome which means this is a tick based track. There is 960 ticks per quarter note. There is something that relates to MIDI and instrument tracks only that is called real time properties. You can get to this in one of two ways. It can be found in the edit window view selector and then you can see it on the tracks themselves. And here it is down here. There's a column now called real-time properties. However, one thing to note is you do not see it on the audio track. You don't have to really think about what real-time properties do. You just have to know that it's only on instrument tracks and MIDI tracks. There might be one question on the test. It relates to transpose. You can transpose two, and then it will take all the notes, and then it will make them a single note. The only thing that I can think of that that would be useful for is like if you had a bass line that might be somewhat melodic, but it was only playing to the what the kick drum was, and I wanted to generate pulses for my kick drum. When you do one of these actions, it relates to the entire track. However, there's another place you can look for this, and any anytime you're asked which menu a MIDI function is under, it's usually in the events menu. There is also what's called a floating real-time properties window. With this, you can either do a track, or if you have a clip selected, you can apply that property to just one clip if you want. So the difference between the floating real-time properties window is it can either be based in a track or a clip. And with the one that is in the track view, this can only be used on the track itself. To select MIDI notes, with my grabber tool, 
I can play a MIDI note by touching it. If I want to select multiple notes, I can shift click each note with the grabber tool. And then it'll play it and then select it. Or if I'm not hovering over a note, it turns into this little cross. And then I can click and drag over a series of notes and select them that way. The third way I can do this is with the selector tool, click and drag across it. The pencil tool allows me to write notes in if I want. If I hover over the center of it, it becomes the grabber tool. If I wanted to audition clips in my clips list, I would have to set up a default through instrument. So I can go to preferences, go to the MIDI tab. If I had a virtual instrument set up in my session, I can select it here. Then either when I'm auditioning things over here on the clips list, or if I have MIDI data coming in from an external controller, then it will be played through that virtual instrument. If I wanted to audition something in my clips list, I could hold down option and click it. And then there it is. And that's basically all you needed to know about MIDI for the 110 exam.